particles, in fact, don't exist. Consider, for example, a particle we all know and love, the electron. They're all the same. You know, if you produce an you know, electron on the other side of the universe and you brought it here compared with an electron, they're the same. It's not in the same way that you pick up two red billiard balls and say, you know, these are pretty similar. We say they're identical. This is because the electron, as a separate, distinct entity, doesn't really exist. They are merely bumps in something called a field, which is a property of space and time. And if it's true for the fundamental particles in nature, it's true for everything that makes them up, including us. And so at some level, <laughs> we don't exist. <laughs> Even though I may not exist, I decided to go through with my next interview. If you went back to the Big Bang and started all over again with the same materials, right. started the universe again, would you get the same result, the same universe that we have now? The short answer is no. There are quite a number of inherent sources of randomness in the processes that lead from the Big Bang to where we are now. And that randomness would guarantee that the universe would not be identical now. It would be very similar. The question, why are the laws of physics the way they are, would be we're just observing those that allow beings like ourselves. What is the origin of the universe, and how does that affect our origin? Um, the, uh, um, yeah, let me, let me think about a good, a good way of, uh, of, of addressing this. Don't bullshit me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you caught me, man. And I can go on for hours like this if you want me to. Ooh, look at the time. The particle physicists could have kept me busy all week, which would have been fine, but I wanted to see what Oxford's resident heretic had to say. Is there a god? No, almost certainly not. The god idea is very emotionally appealing for various reasons. It's very nice to feel that you're being looked after. And I think another reason is that a lot of people don't understand the nature of scientific explanation. And so they think that you actually need a god to explain existence, which is actually doubly wrong. Not only do, do you not need one, it's positively counterproductive if you're trying to understand uh, the nature of existence.